Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible each day and read it together. And uh, it's just a, we, we find it's a, a, a good way, maybe even a great way, to get uh, a little bit of God's Word into your day and to develop a, a routine. So we post these videos five days a week. And uh, they are available then for you at, uh, at any time. Uh, we're going through the Gospel of Luke, and we're just going one chapter at a time. So we've started at the very beginning of Luke in chapter 1. We're a little past the halfway point. Now, there are... Uh, 24 chapters in Luke. And today we're reading chapter 14. Uh, chapter 14 is um, 35 verses, so just a little bit shorter than average. Begins this way in verse 1. One Sabbath day, Jesus went to eat dinner in the home of a leader of the Pharisees, and the people were watching him closely. There was a man there whose arms and legs were swollen, and Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the religious law, is it permitted in the law to heal people on the Sabbath day or not? When they refused to answer, Jesus touched the sick man and healed him and sent him away. Then he turned to them and said, which of you doesn't work on the Sabbath? If your son or your cow falls into a pit, don't you rush to get him out and Again, they could not answer. When Jesus noticed all who had come to the dinner were trying to sit in the seats of honor near the head of the table, he gave them this advice. When you're invited to a wedding feast, don't sit in the seat of honor. What if someone who is more distinguished than you has also been invited? The host will come and say, give this person your seat. Then you'll be embarrassed and you'll have to take whatever seat is left at the foot of the table. Instead, take the lowest place at the foot of the table. <laughs> then when your host sees you, he'll come and say, Friend, we have a better place for you. Then you'll be honored in front of all the other guests. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. He then turned to his host. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors, for they'll invite you back, and that'll be your only reward. <laughs> Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it'll be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations, and when the banquet was ready, he sent a servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pair of oxen, and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I now have a wife, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, There's still room for more. So his master said, Go out to the country lanes, behind the hedges, and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. None of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. Verse 25. A large crowd was following Jesus, and he turned around and said to them, If you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else by comparison. Your father and mother, wife and children, brothers, sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost. 
for who would begin construction on a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say there's a person who started the building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers marching against him? And if he can't, he'll send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? Flavorless salt is neither good for the soil nor for the manure pile. It's thrown away. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. That's the end of Luke chapter 14. And uh, as always, a lot of great teaching in this in this chapter. Um, sort of a two, two-pronged theme here in this chapter. Um, the first is humility. And this is, this is a, a thread that's woven throughout Jesus' teaching um, that we must have an attitude of humility. and Not false humility, but sincere humility. And then that theme is punctuated later in the in the in the New Testament where it says our attitude should be that of Christ Jesus who being himself in his very nature divine he was God still did not choose he he he, he didn't elect to hang on to the dignity and the honor and the divine privilege that came with his divine status. Instead, he made himself a servant. He humbled himself to death, even death on a cross, which is the most humiliating form of death. Death on a cross had a, not only was it a horrific means of execution, but it had a a cultural significance as well. Um, that's, that's a big part of discipleship, is having what we articulate as a right view of self, and that is to view others as better than ourselves. And <clears throat> the other side of that coin here is the cost of being a disciple. And Jesus says, weigh the cost. Make sure you understand what you're signing up for. Consider what you're doing, because um, to tr- true discipleship will cost you something. In fact, it'll cost you a lot. In fact, it'll cost you everything. He says, go into this with your eyes wide open. Because there's no half measures when it comes to discipleship. You're either in or you're not. And a lot, uh, many of those Many of those who think that they're in just have a toe in the water, and that doesn't get you very far. Thanks so much for participating in today's daily devotion. I hope you've been blessed by Luke chapter 14. Um, Really looking forward to having you again with us next time. We're going to read Luke chapter 15. God bless you.